people very often think that they're just not good at maths. When I was sort of around 13, 14, I was a really good student in virtually all the subjects except for maths, where I was probably average. In fact, the first time that I encountered trigonometry in high school, I was wondering when on earth am I going to be using this in real life? And I do know that it's ironic that I have a lot of trigonometry on my board. I was really, really interested in learning foreign languages and they were all going really, really well. And maths was one thing that I just was not really excited about. When I was probably around 14 years, there's a really important exam in Bulgaria that determines which high school do you go to. And I scored considerably better in my language exam compared to my maths exam, in which to this day I remember my grade, it was 4.81 out of six, where six is the maximum. It all actually changed when I encountered physics. I was really, really lucky to have amazing teachers that would often go way beyond the syllabus show us why physics is exciting, I knew that I was incredibly interested in physics. I don't think I was very good at it because of my lack of mathematical foundation, but that did not matter because I enjoyed it so much and it worked really, really hard. But I still couldn't really shake off that feeling that maths just seemed a little bit boring and I didn't see the point of maths at the time. It all changed when I was 17. I was actually lucky enough to spend a year in the United States and I enrolled onto the AP class, which is probably I would say the American equivalent of A-level physics. And for the first time, not only was I enjoying the mathematical foundations of physics, rearranging equations, applying the laws of trigonometry, but also being incredibly curious about the underlying mathematics behind it all. Before even formally studying calculus, I was getting so obsessed with differentiation and integration that I remember I was getting textbooks and trying to self-teach myself the fundamentals of calculus. After I came back to Bulgaria, I was pretty much initially convinced that I would do aerospace engineering, but then I specifically remember I went to a bookstore in my hometown. And it's really, really funny because I still have the very book that I got that day, which is this book of just pure lectures on atomic physics. And I was in the bookstore, I opened up the book and I started browsing. And the first chapter of this book contains loads of information about cosmology. It was talking about evidence behind the Big Bang theory, which is something that today this day I really, really enjoy teaching and I could not shake this feeling that I really, really needed to know this and I really, really needed to understand this. From doing quite a lot of physics in the past couple of years, I also knew that mathematics seems to be the language of nature and really is a powerful tool that physics is built upon. So when it came to my degree choice, I was accepted to the University of Manchester and I could choose what course to apply for. And it's quite funny because I remember that a lot of my teachers did not actually believe that I was set to study a dual degree in physics and mathematics. And that was honestly one of the best decisions that I ever made. Throughout my degree, I got exposed to a lot of amazing mathematics, both in physics and in pure maths. We we're studying amazing things such as metric spaces, linear algebra, and how they relate to physics, fluid mechanics. When I was at university, actually, I specialized a lot into the applied side of things. And, and I remember taking every single course on the Navier-Stokes equations that I could get. The reason why I make this video is because I genuinely believe that you don't need a special talent to study mathematics or to study physics. What you do need though is a lot of motivation and the right approach. Mathematics is a lot more than a bunch of problems in an old textbook. It is an incredibly diverse and dynamic field. For instance, when I was studying fluid dynamics, one of my professors was working on numerical problems, applying the Navier-Stokes equations to problems in the propagation of blood vessels, which may be incredibly important for future medicine. On the side of physics as well, I specifically remember the first time that I encountered probably the most complicated maths that I've done up to date, the path integral formulation of quantum mechanics. And to this day, I remember trying to prepare for the exam and thinking that the path integral is the most beautiful mathematical theory that I had ever come across. And pretty much always I've followed the approach of doing physics and maths because it's just so fun. And if you want to see why physics and maths are both incredibly interesting but also incredibly important, you should check out this video on a set of equations that actually inspired Albert Einstein to make a revolution in the universe. So obviously you just have to see that right over here.